Hey everybody, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to take a look at Neptune OS uh, 7.5, the ADA edition. Um, in case uh, you guys don't know, Neptune uh, OS is a distribution that is Debian based. It's based off of uh, Debian 11.4 Bullseye. And um, in this distribution uh, version, uh, ADA, they put the uh, 518 Linux kernel in there. And so um, let's go ahead and take a look at Neptune OS. All right, so I've installed it into my virtual box. I've given it four gigs of RAM with four cores of my processor. Uh, I do that because that's basically, you know, your standard lower end equipment that some people may find themselves on. I mean, obviously the higher end equipment like your Ryzen 9s, 7s, and 5s and all that good stuff is going to actually, you know, do well with it. It doesn't matter. But, you know, there are some people out there that are on some older laptops that might want it. So that's why we do it this way. So this is the desktop that you're greeted with. Uh, it's got the Neptune wallpaper, which is their brand. It's got the two icons on here. This is a KDE edition. Um, it's got the Discover Package Manager right here, which if you click on it, this is where you could add your um, KDE suite of applications um, that it comes in with uh it's probably that was probably wanting me to do an update yeah so if you look if i click right here on the bottom right hand side you'll see where there's um some updates that need to be done so <clears throat> either way so that's your discovery center and then you got your home folder there on the desktop which takes you to your uh file manager if you open it and it takes you to your home directory uh, which is what the home means and so uh, it uses uh, Dolphin File Manager as its file manager. Then at the bottom, you have the taskbar all to itself down here at the bottom. So um, you have the app launcher. Then you've got your four virtual desktops that it has already here. One, two, three, and four. Then it's got Chromium browser loaded in. So let's go ahead. And when you open it, it opens right up to that. That's interesting. So let's go to About Chromium. And here it is version 100.0.0.4.051. So it is a little bit of an older version of it, but uh, this is better than Google Chrome because it's not Googled, so to speak. Uh, so, but if I'm going to install a Chromium browser, I would strongly suggest installing the um, Brave browser in and of itself. Uh, that is definitely the one to put in and to to use because it's more security and privacy based. Um, you could add a bunch of uh, plugins into it the same way as you would uh, any Chromium software. Or you could always go with the, the tried and true uh, Mozilla Firefox. So anyhow, so that is the browser there. It also looks like it's got Thunderbird. It's got Dolphin Manager, which I already looked at, the Discover Software Center. Then we've got VLC Media Player. you got your system settings. When you open that up, of course, it's going to take you to your standard KDE system suites where you can go to your global theme, and you can change it to, ooh, let's try this Netrunner Black X. Apply that. See what we look like. That's interesting. Wait, why didn't it change the wallpaper? We'll leave it there. And then we'll right click on the desktop and we're going to figure our wallpaper. Let's go with something. Go with this one. There we go. That looks to me much sleeker. I like this look. So anyhow, so there's your system settings. And then of course they've got Conqueror installed as well, which is a file browser. Right? 
And it's also, um, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to. Um, and it's also um, a, uh, uh, call it a uh, <clears throat> web browser as well. You can actually browse the web with it as well. So anyhow, so that's a look at the panel, what's on the left-hand side of the panel. And on the right-hand side, your usual, your usual things like your updates, uh, which I'm not going to do on camera because that just takes forever. And then you got your clipboard contents, and you got your volume icon, then you got your Ethernet connectivity, then you got your hidden notification center, and then you have your calendar. So there's that. So now let's go ahead and take a, a quick look here what we got going on. So these right here are your your favorites that they have pinned here already, which is kind of redundant to, except it's got uh, LibreOffice and GIMP right here uh, instead of on the ta on the taskbar. But either way, it's that. So for Office, it's got the LibreOffice suite in it. Um, for utilities, um, you have Latte, which uh, they use the Latte doc, uh, apparently. Uh, it's got the ISO image writer. It's got Crusader, which is pretty cool. Let's open that up. And uh, where are you? Why did you not open up? Oh, probably because it needs an update. Um, so, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do the updates on it so we can get a full optimal thing. I'm just going to put this on pause while it's doing that, and then I'll resume when it's done. I'll resume the review. Okay, so we got everything updated, and everything is good so far. So, uh, anyhow, uh, let's go under utilities. Um, you have the ISO image writer. You got Crusader, Latte Doc, Arc. Kate, which is our text editor, KCalc, KFine, and Spectacle. Under settings, you've got the Synaptic Package Manager. Oh, they got the Grub Customizer, which is really, really nice. If you put in your password here, then what this does is this lets you actually customize your Grub menu and your Grub chooser as well. So uh, you got your list, of, you can configure which one is it's going to log into. Uh, for settings, you have predefined ones that it can go right into. Um, for appearances here, you can actually put these themes and icons on there, uh, all to select from and all that good stuff. So, yeah, it lets you customize Grub. It's a pretty powerful tool, but if you don't know how to use it, then be very careful because you are doing stuff at a root privilege and you can kind of bork your Grub doing that. So, uh, you got Open GDK for Java. You got your system settings, which is your natural KDE settings. And then you've got print settings here as well. For development, you got the QT5 assistant designer and the linguist. For graphics, you have GNIMP, you have GIMP, you have Gwenview, you got Image Magic, you got Inkscape, you got LibreOffice, Ocular, and ScanLight, which is a scanning um, tool. Uh, also for internet, you have the KDE Connect, which is really cool. Um, a lot of people use that. It's also cross-platform. It's not specific for just KDE and Linux. You can actually use it in Windows as well. Uh, also, they got Conk. Like, um, uh, they have uh, Conqueror Conversation, which is a, a messaging client. They've got Thunderbird. They got the X11 VNC server, and they got the Chromium web browser under multimedia. It's got Amrock OBS completely installed. Ardor. Camozo, Caden Live, Pavu, Audacity, all the stuff that you would need for content creation or streaming. Uh, for games, you've got K Breakout, K Mahjong. Of course, it's got the KDE suite of games. For system, of course, you've got Back in Time, which is really nice. It's a system restore function. Then you've got GM Run. Uh, you got the hardware uh, LS Topo. Uh, you've got Image Writer. You got K Part, which is your KDE partitioner. You got the Muon package manager. You got Synaptic package manager. You have Time Shift, which is the same as a crony job for it, it does backups too. Uh, you got the Discover software, Dolphin, Grub customizer, which we already see in the Info Center console, which is your um, terminal emulator, and then they've got Casis Guard, which is your system, your your system um, monitor. 
for your stuff and then you have k wallet then you've got yak wake and then you've got zulu crypt which you can encrypt your drive and you can also encrypt your um your uh uh files and folders as well and then htop let's open up htop and take a look at how we're doing on our system load go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger and we are looking at 1.8 gigs of ram at rest uh we also have um 3.27 megabytes of our swap used out of an 8 gig swap size that it set up all of it its own and it's using very little of my my processors and it, i don't know if you've noticed but it's actually quite speedy i really enjoy that about this this distribution for the science math it's got the libra office math and of course you got your power sessions so that is it at itself when you uh like open up programs it, it actually opens up stuff very speedy i mean it's it's fast uh that's one of the things like gimp is is pretty slow to open but look at it i mean it, it's snappy and that's on a four core processor with four gigs of ram only so i mean it's pretty awesome let's see file manager like that see it opens up it's fast neptune os is really fast i will give it that so anyhow that is a look at the neptune os 7.5 ada or ada edition uh as expected neptune r plays nicely it runs well um it has no issues that i've seen in what I've, I've gotten it to run on um sound and everything uh well you know what we didn't let's go take a look at You'll see a, a YouTube. Let's. As you can see, what is Nobara Project? No, Nobara Project, to put it simply, is a modified version of Fedora Linux with user-friendly fixes added to it. Fedora is a very cool workstation OS. Yeah. However, sound plays involving, just fine, not buggy or anything like that. So package is usually that is the pretty doggone awesome. A typical point-and-click user can often struggle with l how to get a lot of things working beyond. All right. So, yeah, everything works as, as it should on the box, no problems um if you guys have any comments if you're a user of neptune uh please make sure you leave a, a comment down below about it also um if you guys have any other suggested reviews you want me to look at please go ahead and leave that comment or you could message me uh either email or on facebook at the linux tube um i respond more to email more than anything but you can certainly email me also don't forget to um like and subscribe and share and thanks to my patreon Mislav. uh and also uh while well, you get a chance go ahead and check out the shop being part of the channel and check out uh the tlt store all right guys thanks so much you guys have a great day you guys do what you do and you guys keep on linuxing